joined by Robbie Dees. Robbie, back for the part two, mate. How are you doing? I am good. Uh, delighted to be back and speaking to Hi. you again. How was your summer? Uh, short, very short, but uh, decent. Got away for a couple of days. Uh, got to spend some time with friends and family and that. Um, but yeah, no, short and sweet and back to it already. We'll get into the quick fire questions, put you under a bit of pressure, mate. Aye. Your favourite holiday destination? Oh, uh, that is just anywhere where it's sunny, to be honest. It's in Mallorca there and it was very good. So I'll just, uh, it was very good. I'll just go with Mallorca that now. Your favourite cheap meal? Chinese. What are you getting? Uh, salt and pepper chicken, egg fried rice, and then this could be controversial, but I always get the gravy. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, yeah, I always get the gravy um, and salt and pepper chips. Solid. Any superstitions? Like before games? Aye. No, really, apart from uh, I always eat a mountain full of pasta on a Friday night. So that's about it. Your favourite TV programme? Um, you know what? I'm no massive. I didn't watch many series, but I've always said my favourite's like Line of Duty, and I've watched it years ago. I've not watched it since, but I, that's probably my favourite. Your favourite film? Jesus. Ken, what? I, the, right now, the new Top Gun, Maverick. Love it. Your job if you weren't a footballer? Oh, Jesus. Um, what from my dad? My dad, but I what from my dad. Your favorite music artist? It changes a lot. I've I listen to everything, bit of country and that, but probably overall probably stereophonics. And lastly, your karaoke song. You going for a stereophonics number? Nah. I've not got the vocals for it. I am honestly one of the worst singers ever, but uh, probably Valerie. It's a crowd pleaser, that, mate. It's easy enough, and you can, that you're hoping that folk join in with you. So we'll get into it. Go back to last season. Yep. Bit of a tough one for you with the leg break. Is that your first I, serious injury? My only really injury, to be honest with you. Um, I, at first, when it happened, I was too busy shouting at the referee to even realise what had happened because I just thought I had a dead leg and it wasn't until the physio came over and um, that's when I... It wasn't even then, to be honest with you. It wasn't until I was... Because la- I was, cause I got I walked off. I don't think I'd properly broken it until I stood up and started walking off and I, that's when I think I broke it and then it wasn't until I was sitting in the physio room then I got told that, to go to the hospital. I was like, oh, this isn't it. This isn't it good. How did you find the recovery process? Um, really hard because I couldn't do anything, and um, I couldn't, I couldn't drive. I, I couldn't, I couldn't really even put my socks on or put my boxers on and properly. Like it, it was a proper task. Uh, I moved down the road back in with my mum and dad for two weeks, and like, it was just at that stage when I couldn't do anything. Like I just felt like a nuisance when I was like. I had to get folk to fill up water for me or get me a snack or something. Um, and then just stay long days in the gym. It was throughout winter as well. And you know what it's like in winter when it's like, it's, it's dark when you wake up, it's dark when you come out. And I was in the gym all day and uh, it was hard. But one thing, which I just know it's actually a shame, but the amount of injuries we had last year, we had like a stage, there was like 10 boys injured. So I had like a lot of boys with me which made that a lot easier for me. I had the likes of Shane and Shane Sutherland and Tom Walsh who were who had quite serious injuries. And my flatmate at the time, Scott, um, he was out with a, a, a thigh strain. So I had a lot of boys with me a lot of the time, which made it easier in that sense. But when I got back into things, it was like the adrenaline got me through the first couple of training sessions until I realised that like I needed to watch what I was doing because like I never got an operation or anything in the bone. It was a clean break, so I was just a case of like waiting for the bone to heal. Um, and I I got a scan, I got an X ray. Sorry, at four weeks, and it didn't look any different from when the day I broke it. And then I got another scan. I think it maybe 
10 weeks and to me it was the same so I was kind of panicking but then I eventually got another x-ray and it looked you could like a specialist looked at it and says it's right so um, that kind of gave me the confidence because at the end of the day when you don't know if you've ever broke a bone or that's like having the confidence to then like put my full weight through it like my right leg's normally my jumping leg like it was all these different things going through my head but then see when you start when I start playing like in a game a competitive game everything goes out, out the window like it's just like pure uh, that's not even on my mind were you quite paranoid at the first just trying to basically like start trusting it again uh, yeah I was but I remember like it was like my second training session back I don't know like this is what I'm saying when I'm training or play or when I'm playing like I don't think about it and I blocked a shot just like a sliding block with my right leg and like Everyone kind of went, like, eyes all opened up, like, oh, <laughs> that, you shouldn't be doing that. But then after that, it was fine. And then I'm pretty sure, like, my second game I came on, it was against Dundee. And I was in two 50-50s in the space of five minutes. So, like, after that, I, I knew I was fine, to be honest with you. Straight back at it? Straight back at it, I I was a couple of weeks on the bench. Then two, no, two weeks on the bench. Then after that, the the... Dodgy finally he, he brought me on gradually before two games I came on 15 30 and then I started Air, Air United was my first game back first 90. Did you feel like oh, did you feel like you had to regain like natural fitness in a way as well after being out a decent amount of time? Uh, it's hard like see so try to keep it was hard to try to keep fit because I couldn't cycle couldn't run I was doing like and I I struggled to do the roar, hated the roar. I was doing like battle ropes and the hand bike machine in the gym. And like, that's, you could do all that, but none prepares you for like football fitness in the space of stop go. Like, so I was blown hard, like early doors. And I didn't, I didn't regain my fitness until I still think I'm, I'm finally getting back to it now. And this has been the following preseason, but towards the end of last season, even the cup final, I was, I wasn't fit because I had 18 weeks out technically. And see, um, obviously when you came back, you went on an absolute ridiculous run. <laughs> what what do you think you put that down there? I know he's missed out the playoffs like the last game, but uh I mean it looked really good for me, I but I don't know. You need to take me a credit, mate. I know, maybe, maybe, but now but every season I had at Inverness, we always went on a spell a run of games and we and we, we couldn't win or we, we were just doing poor but then I think just I don't know we just kind of find our form it's just when you find your form you find that rhythm and just things were we were maybe losing a goal early on and we we're, were pulling it back and we we're putting in good performances and stuff and then I think that's what I felt was a massive turning point was the Scottish Cup game funnily enough against Kilmarnock at the quarter final um, we all, we won we went 1-0 down in the first few minutes and then we come back and won the game 2-1 to get us to Hamden. I think that kind of, that lifted everyone and in, in what we were capable of doing. Um, So I think that was probably for me the turning point for the team to realise what we're capable of doing. Even we knew last season, like, like the season before we were 45 minutes away for beating St. Johnston. Um, so we knew we were good enough. It was just a sense of just finding that form again. I think the Scottish Cup run helped in the sense that like every boy would have wanted to be involved in it. Yeah, hundred percent. Um to to play at Hamden in a in a, a semi final and a cup final is is a memory that I'll live forever for anyone that does it. For me anyway. And uh, I think boys who are outfit were doing everything they could to get back fit. Like Training the intensity was good because you want to be in that starting eleven. Um, and I think that probably benefited as well. You're right, so that would have played a big part in in the in the run we went on. See so on the Scottish Cup run as well. How weird was it the fact that he's got knocked out and then being stated, didn't it? I know, like, like kind of like a a second chance type thing. Yeah, like, well, I remember watching the game against Queens Park and we were well beaten. Queens Park were good that day, um, and then. A couple of texts went into the group chat at night after the game about it, and we were like, "Nah, like it can't. That can't. It'll be like 
that's not happening. And obviously it came out and we were like, <laughs> that's when the Livy game happened and it was kind of like, this is a hit or a miss. Like, we technically shouldn't be here. And then the boys went on and, and blown blown Livy away, beating them 3-0, unfortunate for you. But... Oh, man, thanks for mentioning that again, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just, I think that kind of gave, that was probably another, maybe another turning point um, after putting a performance like that. Because at the time, you were, you were going well. You were doing well. So to put in a, a performance like that and obviously Billy Mackay scoring the goals he did, it, it kind of probably gave the boys a boost that we're needing. Billy Mackay turning into like a prime Ronaldo man. Yeah, uh, don't see the goals. To be fair, the goals he scored were, were pretty ridiculous. The one really goals he would normally score either, eh? Oh, no, he's, he's a fox in the box, him. But I think he even said himself that I don't know if it was the it was the one on the volley. He's he says he's mishit it, but the mishit has actually worked for him and went right into the top corner. It's two of the best finishes you'll see, mate, genuinely. Nah, that's Billy showing his quality. He does that in training. Does it? Yeah, he's Billy's one of the best finishers I've ever played with. So you touched on Kelly, um, obviously beating them. <laughs> How big an achievement was that getting to Hamden and playing there, firstly against Falkirk and then We'll obviously touch on the final after that. Yeah, huge. Um, I grew up going to all the home Scotland home games, watching uh, Scotland with my my family, and I was you always dream of playing it at the national stadium and to get an opportunity like we did. And to be honest, we had a lot of pressure on us because we were the favourites. We were not expecting to go into that game, uh, going into a semi final being favourites. Um with Celtic and Rangers being still in the competition to to get the draw we did it, it was a lot of pressure on us and um, I thought on the day we didn't play overly great uh, they they moved the ball well but I, I, we limited them to very few chances, it was probably from our own mistakes like, that got them their opportunities and we kind of shone through our quality through through Billy and um, Dan Mackay but the occasion itself was amazing, like I had I had two buses for my fat like my dad organised two buses from Kinross. It was about eighty folk coming through to That's the outrageous, game. Man. I know. I had eighty folk for Kinross at the game. It was just like it was mental. Like they had an absolute great day. It was a, it was a great day all round, to be honest. And then to obviously win three 0 was even better. Like you said though, it wasn't an easy time. All the pressure was on you. Especially like Falkirk had good results as well in the build up to that. Like they could have stumbled against Arvo, but they're just professional showing and Yang Hughes kind of done to them what they done to Darvo in a way. Yeah. Who's well, got the job done? I, to give Falkirk their credit, I, th- well, I know McGlynn, McGlynn likes to play football and they did play, they play some nice stuff in that and they've got some good players and um, we knew that and the Dodgy Dodgy had us set up to kind of deal with their midfield because that was the boy McGinn likes to control the game and that you could see that in the game watching it back, um. But we did limit them to very few chances. They maybe had a lot of the ball, but they didn't maybe go anywhere with it. Right. We were probably very just ruthless going forward, so it was probably our our most the best thing for us. But it was also a, for a day out for the fans. I think Inverness as a club have been. Well, the fans have been lucky in a sense of, obviously, 2015, they won it. They've had a semi-final against Hearts a few years ago as well. And then to then get to another semi-final and a final again, it was like, no many clubs are, are lucky enough to say that. No, there isn't it. To yeah. me, sure, they could, it could have been worse for them. It could have been me and the only time you get to Hampton is when it's in middle of a lockdown. Yeah, that's true, actually. Horrendous, man. Aye, that must have been gutted for you. See, um, like, and, and well, leading into the final, what was the build up like in that? Because a lot of the players maybe weren't used to that. It was hard because because we missed out on playoffs. Um, we had I think it was four or five weeks before the final, so ah, uh, we we got beat off air, and the we got given ten days off, so I actually ended up going to Portugal for three days. Because I knew that my summer was going to be cut short, so some of us went away just to chill and relax, and then we came back and we had like what we went over to Northern Ireland to play Dungan and Swifts, who 
were waiting to play a, pl- a relegation playoff game. So we played them in a friendly. We played Nairn County, who the Highland League team that their season were finished. So they actually called boys. They asked boys to come in and play on the off season against us, who were about to go and play against Celtic. Like that is the difficulties they're up against. Like it was hard for the club to get games because every team had finished. Like all the season, other teams had finished. Premier League teams are still playing, but they were playing against each other. Like England, I'm pretty sure League One and League Two, they were all finished. So like it was impossible to get games sorted. So we ended we had quite a few bounce games upon our, within ourselves and that. But we were lucky enough we had uh, Aaron Doran and Danny Devine had played in the 2015 Cup final. Aye. We've, we had the experience within the team that have played in these games before and like we had a lot of experienced players that played at a good level. So we did have like calm heads at the same time. But at the same time, going at the final, we were the underdogs this time. And it was a sense of we are not expected to win this. Like we just go out and play our play how with freedom at the end of the day, like no one's gonna no one's expecting us to go and blow Celtic away or whatever. So it was it was a it was a weird time because it was a long time out in competitive games. It's like that in pre-season and you play against friendlies. It's not great until the actual season starts. All right. What was it like being in the tunnel at Hamden ready to step out against Celtic the Scottish Cup final? Uh, it, was, it was good. It was good. Um, I knew a few of the coaching staff from uh, being a youth, playing in the youth system. So it was nice to see them but then at the same time, it's like the heat. When I when we walked out, these big flares came up, and I've never felt heat like that before in my life. But it was just mental walking out, and obviously Celtic had I don't know three quarters of the the way around. And it was just mental, and Inverness. To be fair to them, the fans turned out in in good numbers. Um, but I thought I would have been a lot more nervous than what I was, but. I was probably more nervous in the semi final, as I said, just with the position we were in compared to fight uh, the final. But during the game, it, I've never been so tired in a game of football in my life with the heat and playing against them. It was like mentally tiring. Right. Just some of the stuff they play and stuff. But um, I felt we that we we stood tall and like we done we done well and limited them. Um, but yeah, no, it was a, it was a great experience and I had another. 90 folk for Ken Ross at the game as well so it was a good day out for the friends and family <laughs> uh, I, I was lucky enough to have the support that amount of support for where I'm from so I kind of it was it was good to to repay them with a day out like that How did you find the actual game obviously it's a massive step up in quality playing against Celtic Yeah uh, it was it was tough but I felt we set up the way we set up was to limit them controlling the midfield as well best as we could. And um don't don't get me wrong, like they they had like pretty much all the ball and we were quiet in the first half. Um but the goals we lost, I think watching it back, we could could have done better. Um and then obviously it went two one with a couple of minutes to go. And like if you could see it within us that like we'll get a chance here. Um, oh, I'm fine. We never, we never came. Out. It was a few minutes to go, and then they scored late on to fi- finishes three one. But um, uh, as I say, like no many, like no many folk can say they played in a Scotch Cup final. Well, so I'm hoping uh, it's no the no the last time that I'll be get an opportunity like that. How big an achievement is that for a club like Inverness? <laughs> I would say huge, but they've done. I know. It. See, I was going to say this as well. They've done it so frequently that. There's something about Inverness in the Scottish Cup, so I mean, to get it was just as you say, get the technically we got knocked out against Queens Park, and then to then go on to the final was it was a weird one. Let's go on to the room, eh? This season, yep. Signs for Kelly. Why? Yep. Why Kelly? Uh I've said it before that I was shocked playing against Kelly in the. When they're in the champ, at how big the club was, um, and it took me by surprise. And then getting to when I got to meet and speak to the manager, 
Um, he spoke really, really well, and it was all encouraging stuff. And then after speaking with my um my family and stuff, it felt like the right choice to come and play here and what I want to achieve. And um, yeah, no, I feel like I feel like I've been here, been in for a few weeks now, probably a month now, and I already feel settled and um can see as an exciting exciting place to be around and it's well 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 supported and um we're all well looked after as players as well so I'm glad of the decision I made and I'm I'm excited for this the season obviously the the league cup started now which is good it's finally in competitive games um so now I'm just looking forward to playing Premiership football with a, a club the size of Kilmarnock. Tell me a wee bit about your first conversation with Derek McInnes. I've said mm-hmm. to you before that anyone who's been signed by McInnes that's been on here just says, as soon as you speak to him, you're no going anywhere else. Yeah, he's he's he spoke really well. And what was massive for me was he, he took an interest in me when I was out injured. He, he wanted to speak to me when I was injured, which for me was massive because I'd been out for, at that time I'd been out. So he'd obviously kept an eye on me, liked me as a player, and he backed me to obviously come back from injury, um, which was massive. And then getting to speak to him and just the exciting what he was built, what he's building about the place is just like it's hard to say no to. And um, I mean, his his start, his career as a manager kind of speaks for itself. How well he's done, he's 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 got to so many, uh, he's got hammed in so many times, and like just what he's achieved and. Just exciting to be a part of it and for him to to want me was was massive even when I was out injured as well it was it was a massive box and then a box to occur so no it was I had a, a good few conversations with my family and stuff but I, I just felt right and enough like speaking to him as you say like it is hard to say no and obviously you said there the league cup games have started how have you found pre-season so far has it been tough it's been tough in a sense of like, as I said before, I feel like I'm still catching up for fitness last year, but we did have a short break. Like I think most of us had like three weeks, two and a half to three weeks off. So it was short, whereas you probably get maybe four or five weeks just with how the season's worked. So it's been tough and just like playing a, like playing a different system and, and, and playing with new players, it, it's difficult. But as I said, like I already feel at home. It's like, that's how well the changing room has been built here and just like all oh, the boys are great and um, no I feel it's tough you know I mean you've probably watched plenty of friendlies before in your life it's tough playing in them um, to get that competitive side of things and um, to finally get that first competitive game on Saturday at, at Rugby Park was uh, just what what I feel like I was needing as a as pre-season was coming to the end, it was just it gets you ready for the season and I just want to be playing in those games. I think everyone's looking at Kelly and we were kind of touched on it earlier, but they've signed really well and they've signed you, obviously, Matty Kennedy, Kyle McGuinness, Stuart yeah. Finley. What players have impressed you since you've started training with them? All of them have impressed me to be fair. I don't uh, I don't want to hype anyone up just in case they listen to this. But um no nah, I mean I think who he's brought in, the manager, uh, the gaffer kind of, it just kind of shows you what he's capable of and who he's able to bring in. These players have all played at really good level and have pro- proven themselves in the Premiership, so I hope to do that myself. Um, but the standards is, is really good and um, the training's brilliant and we, we're, as I say, we're well looked after. The sports science side of things, food, just everything, it's... it's um, yeah, no, as I said, it's an exciting place to be around. You can see the managers building building something here. Would you say it's been a big step up in quality for the championship? Uh, I wouldn't say a massive big step. It's probably a sense of there's more quality. Yeah. There, like, don't get me like, I played in the championship for the last four years and there's quality right through it. But it's probably maybe a more, there's more, more, uh, more individuals with quality, if you know what I mean when I say that. Um, so yeah, no, there is a definitely there was more demand, definitely a lot more demand put on, and um, I feel like when you play with a club the size of Kilmarnock, there's a bit of pressure as well, which is good. You want to be playing in those sort of games and, and playing for in those situations. So 
Uh, yeah, and no, I would say there is there is a step up in quality. What would you say the aims are for Kelly this season and for you personally? For Kelly, well, I feel like any club it would be to stay up in the Premiership, so hundred percent stay up, and then it'd be great to get to top six. But um, we're just gonna take each game as it comes, I think, because it's get every game's tough in this league, and I'm excited to be playing in it. And um, my goals personally would play as many games and start to get as many starts and games as I can and uh, prove myself and prove to the manager why he, why he signed me and um, yeah I feel like this season my goal's got to be just stay, get myself on the team and stay in it I know you, you you said earlier on that you've been going to the Scotland game since you were young yeah. um, is that something longer term that you're looking at and was maybe played a part in the fact that you signed for Kelly. Yeah, I mean, uh, a dream of mine is to, to play for Scotland. I feel like any 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 football player would be a dream to play for their country. Um, and uh, as I've said before, in a couple of years before, like there's there's players here that went on to do that. You look at Greg Taylor, Stuart Finlay played with Scotland, Steve O'Donnell, Brophy played for Scotland. Like these players, like there's a platform here to go and do well and play, and um. Who knows? I mean, the international team's doing doing pretty well now, and uh, I'm just focusing right now. Is focusing on getting in the commandic team and doing well and and uh, doing well for the club. But I mean, who knows? In the sense, uh, in years to come, you'll you'll be hoping that doesn't happen, mate, because you'll need to come on here for the third time again. Aye, uh, well, you'll need to pester me a wee bit more then. <laughs> Top man, mate. Thanks very much for coming on. It's appreciated. No worries, mate.